Before we actually look at how to physically create a chart in Excel, we need to just have a short discussion on deciding which data to actually put into your chart. Take, for example, our sales data. Firstly, it has a number of sheets, January all the way through to December. So your first decision is which sheet to work on. You cannot create a chart very quickly on multiple worksheets. So we'll pick on January. Then once you're in the January sheet, you need to decide which of the data you can see in front of you, you would wish to graph. If you want to create a chart from all of it, then we can do that very quickly. We don't need to highlight anything. We simply use our chart creation tool to create a chart. Now that was very quick, and we'll see shortly how you can do that. And the only problem with graphing everything is you get the totals and everything else is then skewed apart because everything is relative in a graph. These bars here are only that height because that bar there is that height and using most of the graph. If we didn't have the totals in there, then these bars would be much higher. So we could go back. If we don't want all the data graphing, then we simply highlight the data we would like to graph. So I don't want the totals at all. So let's just take the total numbers and create our chart. There we see our bars are much higher and much closer to each other, apart from the little set here, because we've taken out the totals. However, what we haven't done is given ourselves any labels. Everything is numbered. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We don't have horses, cars, helicopters. And we have series one, two, three, four, instead of north, south, east, and west. So although we've only highlighted the data that we want, we also need to highlight the labels that we would like to use in our chart. As well as these values here, I need to make sure I pick up the column heading labels and the row heading labels. That way, when I create my chart, I get labels. So now these section blocks are each of the types of vehicle or well, transportation that we sell. Can't use vehicle because a horse isn't a vehicle. And then each of the color bars represents a different region, north, south, east, and west. So by highlighting the data only that I would like, plus the labels, I then get labels on my chart. Now, we've seen that we are best ignoring the totals when we're trying to chart if we want to create this relativeness between the size of the columns. But I don't need to chart everything. It may be that all I require are the car sold information, the bike sold information, and the horses sold information. So I can actually select non-consecutive regions by holding down the control key. So we highlight the first region. We then highlight the second region. We then highlight the third region. The whole time I'm highlighting region two and three, I have the control key pressed down. And then I create my chart. And we see we get cars, bikes, and horses, the only three lots of data graphed. However, underneath each of our blocks, we have one, two, three, four again. The reason for that is I haven't actually selected north, south, east, and west. So if I want labels again, I need to make sure I highlight the labels. I need to add this block in. I'm actually adding in that cell there so that each of the components of each list has the same number. If I just highlighted these four, you'd probably find that Excel would match the north to actually match those labels. And then that would be south, that would be east, and that would be west. And the fourth item wouldn't have a label and it would say four. However, having highlighted this set of labels last, can Excel understand what I mean? Let's see. Of course it can. It's quite clever, you know. So now I have labels under each of my blocks, north, south, east, and west, instead of one, two, three, four. But I'm only graphing the columns that I've highlighted, cars, bikes, and horses. The caveat, really, before you even go to create your chart, is to highlight the data that you would like graphing and the labels that effectively match that data so that your graph has labels on it. Otherwise, you'll just end up with series one, two, three, four, and category one, two, three, four, and that doesn't make the graph very easy to read at all. It's the labels that will make the graph easy to read. It's the data that will make the graph functional. So it's getting the right amount of both to make that work. So it is important to highlight the right data. What we'll do now is we'll move on and have a look how you can actually create the chart once you've highlighted the right data that you want.